Hi guys, this is Andrew Burgess back with Lesson 12 of the Ruby for Newbies series here on NetTuts. I know it's been a while, but hopefully we can get back into doing some of these lessons. Alright, so in this screencast we're going to talk about a really neat option Ruby has for handling uh, some errors that you get when you call a method that doesn't exist, and how we can use this functionality to uh, do some really cool stuff. And so that doesn't make sense, let's get right into it right away. I'm sure you'll find it really interesting. Okay, so we're going to start by opening up a terminal window here. I'm going to open IRB, and we're going to uh, do a little example first. So let's have just a new blank object. And if we just call um, some method on that object, we get a no method error. Undefined method, some method for object, right? So Ruby can't find the method, so it uh, throws an error. Perfectly reasonable. but. Ruby also gives us some functionality that we can implement into objects or into a class that we then create an object from, and that uh, is called method missing. It's a, we write a method called method missing, and whenever we try to call a method, and Ruby can't find the method either on that object or in any of its inheritance chain, it will call the method missing object, or sorry, the method missing method, and we can do something with uh, the method name that they asked for. So. To see how this works, let's create a class here. We'll just call this uh, our class. And we're just going to have one method in here, um, the method missing method. Now, the method missing method takes um, a number of parameters. First, it can take the method name. Second, it passes each argument that the method uh, that was passed to the method that does not, does not exist. It passes each of those arguments to method missing as individual arguments. What we can do is do star args or splat args and that uh, asterisk at the beginning of args is the splat operator and what it will do is it will soak up all the uh, parameters that get passed in so all the parameters after name will get soaked up into this one args array but actually not all the parameters because if we have a block we can uh, grab a block parameter so the first one will go into name the last parameter will go or the last parameter being a block will go into the block uh, variable and then all the parameters in the middle will get soaked up into the args parameter which will be an array of those parameters. We're not going to be using the args or block parameters in this screencast but um, that's how you could uh, capture them if you needed them. So we're just going to put out a message here saying uh, uh, the method and then we'll say name.2s uh, doesn't exist. And actually, I'm just going to put some uh, a single quotes around the method name. Now, why did I say name.2s? Well, it's because name is actually a symbol, and so we can turn a symbol to a string just by passing uh, the 2s method to it. All right. So now let's uh, oops let's end the method and the class. All right. So now if we say uh, o equals our cl class dot new o dot some method. Notice that instead of getting an error, we get this printed out to the console. The method sum method doesn't exist. So that's not very useful, what we're doing right now. However, I'm going to show you next um, an example where um, we can do something much more useful with method missing. So here on the desktop, let's create um, a file that we're just going to call a touchsite.rb. All right. So once this opens up in Vim here for me, oops. All right, so class touch site. All right, so we're going to create a class that might be um, one of the touch plus sites if we were going to create um, an object for one of those. So let's start with an uh, initializer method. So initialize is going to take um, a name, which will default to an empty string, and uh, an array of tuts, which will default to um, an empty array. All right, so then let's set the name um, property to uh, name and the tutorials property to that touch array. We should also um, make these accessible from outside. So we'll say um, adder x accessor, and we'll create one for the name and the tutorials properties. Okay. 
All right, so now um, let's say we wanted to have some methods like def, um, what method? For example, uh, get tuts about JavaScript. And I should show you uh, what how we're going to pass in these tutorials. So tuts is going to be, um, we'll just have create an array here that we'll fill this in a bit later. But it would be uh, something like there's going to be a title, there's going to be an author, something like that, and then there's going to be tags, and tags will be an array of tags, just like that. Very simple, just like that. So um, you'll need to know that structure just to explain what we're going to do right here. So when we say get tuts about JavaScript, we're going to say at uh, tutorials dot select. The select method, it takes a block, I will call this to and each tutorial or each item in the array is going to be passed to the block. If the block returns true, the item will be kept. If the block returns false, the item will be discarded, and a new array um, with a, a new filtered array will be returned from select. So remember, because this is going to be the last item, the last method call, um, or the last statement in this method, um, then we don't have to put return there, but it's because it's implied, and it will return the the filtered array. So in here we're just going to say um, tags uh, dot include um, JavaScript, just like that. And that's how we would do that. If we wanted one for authors, we could say uh, get tuts by Jeffrey Way, and we could do um, uh, tutorials dot select do tut tut uh, author uh, e equals Jeffrey Way. All right, so let's give this a try. If we were going to do this, um, I have some tutorial. Let's create. So let's do this. So we're going to say an net tuts equals uh, tuts site dot new we'll call it net tuts and let's create uh, just an array of tutorials up here that we're going to call tuts and I actually have an array right here uh, let me turn off wrapping here for you and so you can see here we have exactly what I showed you earlier we have just a, an array of hashes with a title an author and some tags and so now here if we uh, print out to the console, let's put um, that touch dot get touch about JavaScript. Let's save this, come back to the terminal here. Let me clear the terminal and we'll say uh, Ruby touch sites. You can see we have two tutorials with the tag of JavaScript. Let's make sure that's correct here. One, two. Yes, we have only two. If we change this to get touts by get touts by Jeffrey Way, come back, run this again. You can see we have three tutorials here with the author of Jeffrey Way, which is right one, two, and three. All right, so that's great, but where's the method missing thing? Well, obviously we want to get touts by uh, other authors and other tags, but we couldn't possibly create a uh, method for every single tag or author that might ever come around. Now, of course, we can do a get touts by author and get touts by tag that pass parameters uh, with the tag and the author, respectively. But we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to instead get rid of those methods and just define a uh, method missing property, that, uh, me method missing method that just is going to take the name. So let's go through this. This is going to be kind of complex, but I think you'll like it. So first, we're going to uh, duplicate the array. Every method, uh, every object has a dupe method, which just duplicates the object in RAM. We're going to do this because we're going to use the select bang method on this new tuts array. Select bang uh, actually filters the array in memory um, and actually gets rid of the items that return false in the block. Um, just like other bang methods do. So we're going to duplicate that tutorials array so we have a copy of it in memory and then work with that copy in memory. Uh, the other thing we want to do is take the name here that's getting passed to the method and we're going to just say name dot to string and down case just to make sure it's in the format we want. 
Okay, so the next thing we have to do, let me show you what we're going to do here. If, and in, in this if statement here, we're going to check to make sure that the uh, method name matches our get tuts by author or get tuts about uh, tag. We also want to support get tuts by author about tag and get tuts about tag by author. So that way we have four different formats that we want to support and we're going to write a regular expression for that in a second. It's going to go right there. Um, but if it doesn't support that method, we're going to set tuts to this object uh, doesn't uh, support uh, the, me the method and we'll just pass in the method name that we got there. All right, there you go. And then down here at the bottom, we're just going to return tuts. So we're just duplicating that. Uh, in here, tuts will be filtered, but if tuts doesn't match or match, then we're just going to repurpose that uh, variable to uh, the error message so we only have to return one thing at the end. All right, so this uh, regular expression, how's it going to work? I'm actually going to put this in. Uh, parentheses, you don't usually do this in Ruby, but because we're going to assign the matching of the regular expression to a match data object, which I believe we talked about in a previous tutorial. So see, we're going to say uh, match name, we're going to match this to the name, and if there is a match data object, then we can capture that. All right, so what do we want to do? Well, we want to, it to start by saying uh, get tuts, and then it either has to say by uh, or about, then there's going to be a number of word characters. And with a question mark there um, makes this a non-greedy match. Um, and then, and this is this whole portion is going to be optional. Uh, and this is actually going to end the thing. Then we're going to either have uh, underscore by underscore or underscore about underscore. And then we're going to have um, another series of word characters. If this works, we're going to have a match data object that looks like this. Um, well, at index 0, it's just going to be the string that was matched. At index 1, we're going to have um, either the first by or the first about. At index 2, we're going to have either the first tag or the first author, depending on whether, um, and actually that should be switched. Uh, no. Yeah, if it's by, it'll be a tag. If it's about, no, sorry, if it's by, it'll be an author. If it's about, it will be a tag. Um, th at three, uh, we're going to have the rest of the string, if there is the rest of the string, but we're just going to be ignoring that. Then at four, we're going to have the next by or about, and if that exists. And if there is another by, that's going to be the author. If there is an about, it's going to be a tag. All right. So let's see how this is going to work then. So in here, um, if MD1 is going to equal that first by, then we're going to date tuts dot uh, select bang. And what are we going to select? Well, instead of doing um, a do end block, I'm going to do curly braces so I can put the block on one line. We're going to pass the tut to that. And we're going to say uh, tut author. Uh, dot down case uh, should equal md2 and um, I'm going to use the global substitution method um, and replace every underscore with a space just so if we have uh, first name underscore last name we're gonna get first name space last name um, remember we already down cased the name string so we don't have to down case it here alright so that's the first thing we're gonna do there then also in this is statement we're gonna say if uh, or no, we're going to say select, then we're going to say um, tut uh, tags, just as we did before. Dot include md5, and again we're going to do the global substitution things to replace any underscores of the space, and we only do this if md4 equals underscore about. So notice what we've done here. And uh, let me just put our else statement in there. Actually, it's going to be an else if. OK, 
So what this line says is, we, we're using a, a line modifier at the end here because this is would be a one line if statement we can put the if condition at the end and this becomes a modifier for the line so this will only be run if md4 equals um, about I should mention that if this whole optional section here is not caught which would mean um, well for an example if I just put hash this out here we could do uh, get tuts um, by well, let's just keep this underscore Andrew Burgess and if that were the case um, then MD4 would not get uh, there would be no about after like I could say get touched by Andrew Burgess about Ruby that is where this about would come in this about would be in index 4 if about Ruby was not defined then um, MD4 would be nil and so uh, it's it's still there but it's given the value of nil. Alright, and if that were the case, then this second line here would not be run, because we're not asking to uh, filter by tags. Okay, so else if, and we probably could just do an else here, but I just want to make sure by saying else if, else if md1 uh, equals, and I should, this has to be a double equals up there, else if md1 equals um, about underscore, then what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do something very similar to what we did above. In fact, I'm just going to copy these lines and modify them. Let's yank those and paste them here. We actually want the author one to be up here. I'm sorry, we want the tag one to be up here. But we're going to delete this conditional. And then we're going to actually, uh, we actually have to change this to 2 and change this one to 5 down here. So if uh, about comes first, then the author, I'm sorry, then a tag is going to be second, and then we'll do the author if uh, matched out of four uh, equals underscore by underscore. That's the end of our method missing method. So let's give this a try. Let's come down here. Well, we already have get touched by Jeffrey Way, so this should return the very same thing it did before. So let's run this again. And let's see. Yes, we get the very same thing. We have those three. Now, let's see. What do we have here? Jeffrey Way, JavaScript Canvas, CSS selectors, and HTML. So let's say uh, Jeffrey Way, get touched by Jeffrey Way about Canvas. If we run that, we just get the one tutorial that's about Canvas. Very good. Let's try uh, something else. Let's put uh, the about first. Let's say, um, well, let's just do about PHP. We have two tutorials here. Let's make sure that's correct. Yes, we have two tutorials about PHP. Very good. Let's say um, about PHP by uh, Ian Murray. Yeah, we get that one there. Uh, let's see, what have we not done? We haven't just uh, haven't done by author. Let's say get tuts uh, by Christopher Roach. Oops. And yeah, we get our one tutorial there. So there you have it. This is how method missing works. It's we've taken a method name and we've used whatever that method name was to do something dynamic. I should mention that while this is a pretty neat thing to do. Uh, it's not necessarily the intended use of method missing. Um, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing to do. In fact, the active record class in Ruby on Rails uses this quite a bit for selecting records from your database. So you certainly have a very reputable source to point to should you use this and someone challenges you on it. I think it's a neat thing to do. And if it would be helpful for your classes, you can do it. Although, honestly, in what we've done here, it would probably be smarter to just allow um, create two methods that take parameters instead of um, using the method missing example. But that is our lesson for today. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching Ruby for Newbies, the NetTuts Ruby screencast series.